All right, everybody, welcome back. And as you know, we recently just covered the Friday the 13th series, um, ranked all those, gave you know brief little reviews all you know during that ranking video, and just had a blast. Love that series, probably my second favorite franchise of all time, right behind my favorite of all time, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, which of course we've ranked as well, and we've ranked the Hellraiser movies. And, you know, the kind, of, the kind of companion videos that go along with these, um, like with the Nightmare on Elm Street when I ranked all the Freddy uh, appearances and looks, and with the Hellraiser series, you know, Pinhead kind of looks the same for the most part, except like, you know, in Judgment, Revelations, and, you know, has minor, minor, you know, differences in them. So I just ranked every freaking cin uh, Cinnabite out there. So that was pretty, that was uh, quite the uh, lengthy video, but it was fun, you know, looking at all them and kind of, uh, going through them and everything. So that means today, the, of course, the companion video with the rank of the Friday 13th franchise will be a really fun one. A uh, guy has, who has a lot of interesting looks and big time changes um, throughout the films. Jason freaking Voorhees, our hockey mask slash sackhead killer. You know, sometimes he does that. Um, or even body swapping killer. Um, just a disclaimer, I won't be covering, you know, looks like, um, like, you know, the, the video game, the Savini Jason, even though that's freaking badass. Uh, I won't be doing, like, Never Hike Alone Jason, another really, really cool one, or Never Hike Alone in the Snow. I won't be really covering any of those, like, fan films or, like, any anything outside the main movies or anything. Um, and I know I just mentioned body swapping Jason, but no, that's not a... We're not going to be looking at Demon Jason, you know, the little guy crawling around, little worm-like thing, or any of the bodies he took host in. Nothing like that. Just Jason, uh, Jason's appearance, uh, appearance um, except for one, which you probably already know what that is, but I'm going to count them in here anyways. Um, but, you know, this is one of the cases where, you know, I actually genuinely like all of these versions of him. Every single one. Um, obviously, some quite a bit less than others, and, you know, vice versa. But I, I do dig at least... Uh, at least a little bit all these looks and you know with that being said the one I kind of just you know was hitting at like all just Jason's from the movies well this isn't exactly Jason but number we, we got 14 looks uh, different appearances that I've got for him here so number 14 we're looking at Roy and you know that's the one I'm going to kind of count because you know you may think it's Jason when you're first watching it and I'm also not going to be counting the unmasked or the kid Jason's either and no Pamela Voorhees, just throwing that out there. Just the Jasons and then Roy was kind of the exception here because, you know, he's dressed like Jason. He's got, I, I do like the um, the blue chevrons on the mask. I've always really dug that and thought it was kind of a cool, um, you know, way to shake things up. Now the Michael Myers boiler suit looking thing is kind of, you know, eh, just kind of generic, you know, kind of just seems like a generic slasher outfit. Um, or really just kind of the way he... The combination of like, oh, I got a hockey mask and I got a boiler suit. It's just kind of generic slasher, you know, vibes a little bit. But, you know, it kind of makes sense considering this isn't Jason and this is somebody just dressing up like him. Um, you know, and I, and, but I, so I do think it serves its purpose well. But, you know, definitely like the blue chevrons make it a standout. So I do, even though it makes my, you know, bottom spot here at rank number 14, I dig the Roy look. I think it's pretty cool. Now, if that turned out to really be Jason's look, um, I'd be like, ah, okay, that's quite a bit of a downgrade and a little weird that he's now reverted to coveralls. But, you know, knowing what what it is, you know, Roy Burns um, acting as Jason, you know, I totally take it as a, a really, really cool um, look for, you know, what it is and for an imposter kind of Jason. So there's that. Number 13 I'm going to go with the, um, well, one of the remake versions here, the, the sack head one where he's got the, or more like a wrap in this one. And I've kind of gone back and forth between liking this one or the, you know, the original sack head Jason from part two. Um, but, you know, obviously I've put the part two one above it, even though it used to be, I used to kind of be different on that because I, I do really like, um, you know, it's about what a good, you know, a fourth of the movie that Jason in the remake is wearing like the, the sack head, the bandage, you know, the wrap around his face. I do kind of like that vibe over, or, or I say, I, I do kind of like um that look to him 
um, where he's got kind of a mummy looking, you know, almost kind of a mummy look to him. And, you know, just like it's more wrapped up instead of just the uh, the potato sack, you know, over his head. So that did kind of used to make that um, make me like it more. And I and I love the, blue, you know, the blue jacket and everything. And I, I, I just really dig the um, the feel of this Jason. I mean, uh, Derek Mears did a damn good job. And he he definitely seemed more brutal. Um, and we're not ranking the actors, you know, or anything, but. You know the stature kind of factors in a little bit, and this Jason was definitely freaking huge, um, which used to uh, again you know put it used to put that over the part two sackhead Jason. Uh, but to me, I, I don't know. I guess which that will that'll lead right into this uh, with number twelve, the part two sackhead, um, because you know no surprise here. I do like my hockey mask Jasons uh, quite a bit better, but I do appreciate and dig the you know the sackhead you know original jasons but you know since these are kind of tying into each other here part we'll just hop right into part number 12 part two jason i, I the reason i like that i kind of ended up swapping and going back with the part two jason look that i like better than the remake sackhead look is because it definitely feels more like an old you know hillbilly kind of uh, like feeling to him and with the whole, you know, the overalls and just the potato sack with one eye hole in it. That's just super cool looking to me. And he, he, and just, you know, the classic shot of him with the pitchfork. That's even how I got my figure of him posed with the pitchfork. He kind of looks like, almost like Scarecrow from the, from the, like the newer, you know, the Dark Knight trilogy in a way. Like maybe, maybe they took inspiration from that kind of the sack head, um, uh, you know, look. Maybe, uh, not... Not maybe Jason took inspiration for that, obviously, or, or the Crazy Friday Thirteenth, but obviously the other way around, as the Dark Knight movies came out way you know later. So maybe that could have played a part in that. Um, I know this what what the Friday Thirteenth um, creators did clearly take inspiration uh, from was the town that dreaded sundown. Um, if you know if you ever heard that old tale or seen that movie. Which, uh, that's actually from where I am, uh, in Arkansas. Not the same town or whatever, but, like, I know where that town is. I've drove through it before. Um, God, I'm forgetting. I don't think it was Harrison. It was, God, I'm forgetting it. But I've drove through, you know, I've lived in Arkansas all my life. So I, you know, I've drove through that town before if I could just, you know, remember. But <laughs> what exactly it is. But, yeah, anyways, the, the sackhead looks, both of them are really, really cool. Um, but that hockey mask is iconic, you know, um, so I, I just have a big time love for just it, all the hockey mask Jasons. Um, of course, these are above Roy, uh, because this is actually Jason and, you know, I, I, and I would even if, I mean, if we were given just these, if there were just three Friday 13th movies and those were the only three looks, I would definitely say these two looks are better than the what Roy had if that was actually Jason. So I kind of went by that and I definitely dig these more. Then with no, number 11, it's all hockey mask from here. And number 11, I'm going to go with the Jason X look. This one's kind of, you know, I, I kind of love and hate it, you know, um, or really I'm just kind of, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle with this one, right? Because I love the chain look on him. I love the different shape of the mask, but I don't like these like little puffs of hair. You know, it kind of looks like Kane Hodder just is just under there wearing the mask. Like, the way Jason's eyes are kind of looking around in there. Almost, it's a little weird that he kind of reverted um, back to human um, more so than what than what he was looking like. But, I mean, they did explain it in the movie well and everything in Jason X. But there's just something about kind of like the way the hair is on this. And it, it I, I know he does look all kinds of fucked up underneath that mask, you know. Um, but... Like it looks like when Kane Hodder's wearing it, um, that it just looks like Kane Hodder under there. Like, all right, let's get him in the gear, you know, no makeup or nothing under there. Just mainly because like the way you can see his eyes all looking around and just the hair. And But I, like I said, I do really like the chain um, look to him. And like, you know, kind of the like the, the cloths, you know, just tattered cloths and stuff. I think that is a really cool look and the gloves and everything. So I, and you know, I, I'm desperately just waiting for a, for a NECA figure. Somebody make a, uh, make that, part, you know, that Jason X figure of that because I don't think 
besides like super uh, like the sideshow collectibles, I think the really really big uh, figures that are just super expensive. I think that may be like the only figure that was ever made of that version of him. So I think it'd be really cool if we got like a NECA figure of um, him, a NECA Ultimate. Then I go with number my number ten here, the remake uh, look for Jason. This one, I mean, he's that, that hockey mask. I mean, because <laughs> I like this because, like, he's, I mean, he's looking bulky. It kind of reminds me of the part three, like the way his neck is and everything, just like really, really thick head, you know, and just really bulky guy. Um, the the little bit of hair, the blonde hair kind of look is a little weird to me at times, you know. Um, but the and the mask does kind of look smaller on his face, but I think that kind of adds to like the look to him and just like the remake, you know. Sackhead, but I, I love the jacket look to him and just like the, the dark brown pants and everything. And, and what really, and see this, this is another case where I almost put the Jason X one over this, but I do, I do think this is a stronger look, you know, um, he does, he looks, even though this is more of a human Jason, which I guess you could say part Jason X one is, but he's also kind of zombified, you know, this one looks more deformed to me than uh, with the mask on, uh, then Jason X with the mask on, you know, uh, the pre Uber version, of course, this is what we're talking about. Um, but the, the remake, I, again, just the, the cool, I really like the jacket thing that the Freddy versus Jason, um, version kind of established for him. And then the remake, you know, clearly kind of took from that and we're like, Hey, that's a cool look to him. Let's kind of add to that. And, you know, just the, just the huge neck on him and, um, the way the mask fits on it, mean, you can kind of see that white eye in there and everything. I think that's a, that, that's a really awesome look. So that, that definitely puts it above the Jason X one. Then with number nine, we're talking about a new beginning, part five, but it is the, obviously we've already talked about Roy. So now we're talking about the dream sequence, Jason, that, you know, the mask is just graying and there's worms coming out of them. And you only see them a couple times and sure it is a little dream, uh, you know, not really Jason going around and everything. So this, I guess you could say, is kind of an exception as well. But the look is pretty much just like the final chapter look, except, you know, the mask is more grayed and looks just like soggy in his clothes, or even more soggy. And same with, like, the, the damage is just all over the place. And I just love the worms and, and stuff coming out of them. I need to get me a, uh, a hold of, I need to get a hold of a figure of that. Um, part five dream sequence Jason because I just uh, man I want to pose him with those worms coming out of his face and everything and I just think that's a really cool look and you know the and obviously each time I think each time he appears or at least the, um, the most memorable time when this he appears in the dream or whatever it's like raining down and everything and you know it's just he's sopping wet man and it just looks awesome that scene in the rain with him just turning around I think there's a couple times you see him like not in the rain and he just, he also just looks freaking awesome, I think. So that, that definitely, um, is just such a cool, I guess you'd call it kind of a zombie Jason, you know, form. And I think it would have been really cool to see a, a, a movie with like that as his main look. So there's that for part five. Number eight, I'm going with Uber Jason. And this one was hard to rank because it's so badass looking, man. It almost looks like some kind of Power Ranger villain or something like as over the top as it is, but it's so badass. I just love the steel, how it, like the mask is kind of going around his head, and I don't know if any of you guys are like Yu-Gi-Oh fans out there, but it reminds me of the, the Yu-Gi-Oh card uh, Genzo. If you've ever seen that, you can look it up. It's it reminds me a lot of Uber Jason, um, but I, I think that card design is cool for that guy. So like it's not a slight or anything. Um, I love how you kind of see the um, the like the metal kind of going around, almost looks like it's wiring off into the, uh, into the outfit of him, you know, and just kind of like the black clothing, just kind of like pressed onto him after being kicked into that thing, you know, um, I just, I, I, I love this look, it's, it's such a cool and unique look that made it kind of hard to, hard to rank for sure, um, but I think kind of around here in the middle works best, because, and, and you know, if we would have got a full movie with this, like as a sequel to Jason X or something, Man, I would have loved it because just the scene, just the scenes with that um, Uber Jason just make it 
just man, send that movie over the top. As you know, if you've seen my rankings, I did have a blast with that movie. It didn't rank super high or anything for me, but it was fun. It was a fun watch. Um, I've all I've first time I ever watched it, I hated it, but you know, over time, I've definitely grown to, to love that movie for what it is. Um, and I, I love the eyes too, like the yellowish red eyes. I mean, he just looks pissed off, man. And you know, seeing him. It was really cool, obviously, seeing him go around the spaceship looking like this. But whenever they did that, that kind of virtual, um, you know, campground thing to trick him, that digital campground or whatever, it looked pretty cool seeing the cyborg, you know, Jason, the Uber Jason, kind of going out there in like a camp setting. Because, like, that would be freaking jarring if you're uh, <laughs> if you're out there camping, you know, if they actually had a movie where, you know, they're out there at Crystal Lakes and, bam, he shows up. And you can kind of get a feel for that, um, how that would kind of be if you play the Friday 13th, the game, like, and, you know, get some of the mods and stuff. Um, you can play as him, and it, you kind of get that feel of him walking around, like, the camp like that. It's just such a badass look to him. Uh, the the figure, the only figure they've released of it is just really expensive. I'm eventually going to, you know, suck it up and buy it. Um, but hopefully before then, you know, we get some more. Neck has been kind of lackluster lately with some of these... Uh, um, if, if you guys collect, you know, figures or anything, they've kind of been lackluster with some of our, you know, favorite horror stuff, um, lately. And I guess it's due to licensing or whatever. I don't know, but I, I would just absolutely love, and like, if they made a figure that maybe even make it like real metal as, you know, on those parts that are metal. Then we go to number seven here and I go with part three, um, I love, this is sure, it's really a simple look. You got the jeans, the, the green shirt, and more of a clean looking mask. But you know, this is the first time Jason gets the mask. And um, so it's obviously, it ain't gonna be all like scuffed up too bad or like bloody everywhere, you know, and all battle damaged. But you know, just the way the bulkiness, again, that I kind of liked on the remake, Jason, the bulkiness that um, Richard Brooker you know, his stature just, I mean, he's just freaking huge, his neck's kind of like sunk in like that, you know, he just made for a freaking kick-ass Jason, and the look of him, I like the, uh, it, this one also kind of has that, you know, redneck kind of hillbilly, you know, feel to him with, without going as far as to him wearing overalls, you know, and plaid in a, in a potato sack on his head, you know, um, this one, I've had, I definitely have had a soft spot for this look for him uh, ever since I saw Part 3 for the first time a long time ago. And it's uh, definitely up there as one of my hu a favorite human Jasons. It's, again, it's that stature, you know, and the clean mask. It kind of, that definitely is a standout in the series is his look. Um, you know, the cleanest mask you get from him. Um, so, and it, and it kind of, it's creepy looking, you know. It, it's definitely creepy looking. Sure, it looks, he definitely does look creepy creepier and you know more terrifying when it's all messed up and everything um but it's definitely creepy seeing that just bright white mask and just a big freaking dude wearing that hockey mask then we go with number six i'm gonna go with the final chapter so that's the last of the human jasons that's my favorite human jason look is the final chapter version i almost put part three above it they're so similar you know um but part four i like the kind of graying of the skin those dirty black fingernails man are just they're gnarly you know um i love you know the battle damage just the blood you know um it, the gash from the axe from part three that kind of carried over so there's that cool blood spot on there and then there's of course I, I like also how in the movie how it starts off you know he's got all the chevron still kind of on um and then as it goes on you know there gets a little crack right here over the eye and then um, some of them get rubbed off, one of them rubbed off pretty much all the way, and I think that's pretty cool, so you kind of get, um, uh, in a way, different looks in the same movie with that, but I mean, not, you know, different enough. I, if I had to pick between one of them, I do like it whenever their chevrons are kind of rubbed off on the mask, um, like we see later in the movie, but I, I, and I, and I do think Richard Brooker's stature, um, is, I, I like it better than, um, you know, Ted White's stature as Jason, but it, it's just the, the nastier, you know, he, he's also, there, there's a lot of rain and stuff in this movie too. So he's getting all like, you know, drenched and, and rain and just the graying of the skin. And man, there's something about them black fingernails. Like whenever that kill 
where he jams that dude's face to the shower and you just see them fingernails and his fingers digging into him. That is all that that kind of sent over the top for me because that's just so gross and creepy, you know. And then um the unmasked look is is pretty pretty crazy looking too. Uh, but that that's definitely my favorite human Jason. It it, it took a minute to kind of I, I have gone back and forth on the three and four human Jasons, you know, which one I'd like best, but I, I'm going with part four overall. The stature's better for three, but the overall look, um, because it is better for part four. And he almost looks like a zombie, you know, considering, you know, he got out of the hospital and everything and does have that kind of grayish, you know, darker tone in the skin. And it just makes for a classic, iconic look of Jason. Top five, and the rest of these are zombie ones. So number five, I'm going with the Freddy vs. Jason version. And I love the, uh, the jacket kind of look. Like I talked about, that the remake kind of had this one's more battle damage and tattered, and just looks like, you know, just like he does in the movie where he crawled out of this tomb, you know, um, that he had out there. So, and he, so he looks like that kind of Frankenstein monster kind of thing. Got those big boots. He's huge. Kent Kurt Singer is a huge guy. I I love the um, I love like the little bit of hair. This like coming off his head back there because it doesn't look all bright and shiny like the blonde hair on the remake version you know um, it, it's just dark and just looks rotten coming off of him i love the the skin tone the dark gray just disgusting looking you know i mean you you just look at him you know he smells bad i mean in that one he's just he's disgusting looking which is exactly how it should be um the mask shape isn't my favorite of the series um but, you know, it definitely kind of has a different mask shape, kind of like the, the Jason X one. The pre-Uber Jason also has, like, a really different mask shape to it that makes it stand out. Both of those aren't my... I, I like sticking to the more traditional mask shape, even though I know it does change over the, uh, over the films a lot. These kind of do their... The, I think the Jason X one definitely changes it a lot. This one changes it more so than some of the others. But um, I like how you can kind of see, like, the eye, you know, in there, like, where one of the eyes is, like, half open. Um, and I, I just love how big he is, man, in this one. And this is, like, an iconic look of Jason. This is one of those, probably one of the most iconic looks of Jason, um, especially in recent years. You know, you see him, like, a T-shirt or something like that. You're probably going to see that version of Jason or see someone post about him or, or a meme or something of Jason. It's probably going to be something like that. Or even like your, you know, your little Funko Pops or something. It, that's it's just kind of become an iconic look, and it and it definitely um, I have a soft spot for it too, as that was like the first when I was a kid. That was the first um, hockey mask Jason. Like I got to watch a movie of was Freddy vs Jason. Um, you know, I'd seen part one and two, and then I, and then I watched Freddy vs Jason, and that was like the the version I got to really see. You know, Jason in full effect, zombified as all get out, and um, with the hockey mask. So I, I just love this version. I have a soft spot for it, and it's definitely one of my favorites. Number four, I'm going with Jason Goes to Hell. And you guys, obviously, if you saw the ranking, you know how much I hate that movie. But that look, man, that, that was one of my gripes. It's like, damn it, dude, that look is so crazy and gnarly looking, yet we barely get to see it. Only the beginning and the end of the movie. His mask is now, like, embedded into his skin, and, like, his head's bulbous and growing around his mask. It's just disgusting looking, and I love it. You can tell he's been through shit, man. And he, um, I like the kind of basic, you know, just lightish blue shirt and pants that he kind of has going on with the belt and the bulkiness of him. He's pretty bit bulky, you know, pretty thick dude in this one. Um, and, and I'll also like, this one also has kind of like the little strands of hair coming off there and they are a little bit lighter than, you know, the Freddy versus Jason one, but like, and there's more of it here, but like, it really works here. I don't know what it is, but it really works here for me. Cause this is like the most disgusting looking Jason probably. I mean, he just looks like, you know, bruised, beaten up, swollen. That, that's really the best word to describe this version. It's just swollen. And there's something about it, too. Like, another cool uh, shot of it is remember they're trying to peel it out of there. Like, you know, when they're doing the surgery and they're trying to peel that thing out of there. And it's just in. 
You know, it, it, it's nasty as all get out. And I wish we would have got a full freaking movie of this Jason. Because, you know, I'll, I'll never forget the first time I watched Jason Goes to Hell uh, before. And, you know, I'd heard how shitty it was or anything. But I didn't really know the premise or anything um, whenever I watched it for the first time. And, you know, we are in that opening scene. I'm like, damn, okay, this is some classic stuff. And I'm, I'm digging this look. And then, bam, he explodes into pieces, you know. And then we don't get to see him again until, like, the end uh, unfortunately, but I love the mask on this one. Like I, I, I think the mask itself is like really dirty, almost, you know, it wasn't silver, like the box art, just pure shiny silver or anything like that. Um, although that could have been a cool look, you know, um, if they maybe would have done something like that. But this is one of my favorite versions of Jason. He doesn't quite have like the darker gray looking skin or anything like that as the zombie, uh, like the zombie coloring of some of the others, but he has the, just the, the nasty, bulbous, bloody look to him that just, that, and that, you know, you see that crease in the bloodline, you know, where that thing's been, you know, caved in on him. So love, love, love the Jason Goes to Hell, um, look of him. It's kind of crazy seeing that movie rank at the bottom as far as the movie goes, but then that look ranking right up here at number four. Number three, this might shock some people. But I'm going to go with part seven. And I, I mean, these top three are really freaking hard for me, man. I'm telling you, I've swapped them before. And I love, love, love part seven. The first, you know, Kane Hodder, Jason. The stature is obviously awesome anytime you got Kane Hodder in there. And the chain around him, the jaw, the, 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 you know, the jaw of the mask, you know, being ripped off and just his bones and stuff exposed right there. Um, the spine being exposed, the tattered clothes. All the battle damage from all these movies, it's all there. This is like the most beat up Jason's ever looked. And I love like the brown, like just water lugged skin, you know, and um, like the, you see the bone around his eye and everything. This is just an iconic look for sure. Um, this is probably what most people's favorite is. And I totally understand um, as it has been my, mine as well be, uh, before. And I just... It, it looks freaking, it, it looks terrifying. It has that same kind of nastiness to it that, that the Jason Kills of Hell one has, except it's, it takes away a bit some of like the swollen stuff about it, darkens up the skin and just tatters up everything. And just the chain really makes it for me too. I kind of talked about that when I was talking about the Jason X, uh, pre-Uber Jason X, where the chain was a really cool standout feature to me. And I think that's the same with this one. Uh, you know, the figure um, I've got over there of it, I just, man, one of the best NECA figures out there. Uh, you, you could see all the ribs on Jason and everything. I mean, just the bone being exposed everywhere. His hands are just, it is such a crazy, badass look to him. And what a, just my, I, I love the spine showing. Like, whenever, you know, there's shots following him, and you can just see, like, the spine on his, that, that that's just crazy man they really went all the way with the zombie look um for jason on part seven so i totally totally understand why that's probably most people's um number one then number two this is probably controversial um i'm going with the manhattan look part eight and i know he looks pretty damn silly underneath the mask and everything but like i'm not really factoring that too much into this um this is just such an iconic look uh for me I love the slimy, just wet, nasty look to him and just the black, you know, uh, just the black shirt and pants. The really, you know, vibrant yellow mask is a standout to me. It really fits the tone of the movie. The smaller chevrons, um, just the eyes are just like straight up black. You know, you can't really see through there. And the gloves and the gray skin, I really like uh, that on the, you know, it as far as like the zombie look goes, just the kind of, it looks like he's like pruned up or something, man, with that, with this skin and everything. And you can see a little bit of his skull at the top of his head there. But, uh, the, and what's really crazy is I was watching some like clip of a documentary that where Kane Hodder was saying that they would have to like, after every couple of, you know, shots or takes or whatever, they would have to just go pour more water on him to keep that just slimy look this is another one where he's just really disgusting and just, you know, mucky. And uh, him just walking around, you can just hear, like, the, you know, how wet his his suit is and everything. 
And this one I also kind of have a special um, place for for me. And like, and this one just is really iconic to me um, because I remember catching like the beginning of that of Jason Takes Manhattan one time uh, when I was a kid on TV. Just caught like the beginning of it or whatever. Um, didn't end up finishing it or whatever. I'd think of what, who knows what the hell I was doing when I was. Uh, <laughs> but I, I I ran off and did something else. But I remember watching like that opening scene. Um, where you know they're on the boat they're actually at crystal lake and seeing him come out of the water like that i'm like oh my god that is just it a crazy look to him um and immediately then and you know this was also still around the time where i was mainly exposed to like the freddy versus jason look that one being like what i think of when i think of jason and immediately when i saw like the slimy disgusting gray skin you know um again that bright yellow mask that's really cool looking um, look to him, I was like, that's way better than the Freddy vs. Jason one, and I, you know, and I obviously love the Freddy vs. Jason one, as it made top, top five, but Jason takes Manhattan, and I know there is a lot of people who do like that look, I don't think it's really, I think it's mainly the unmasked look that people aren't digging, um, but I've seen a lot of people really like that look to him, it's really just a classic look, you know, it doesn't go too over the top or anything, um, like part seven did, which isn't a slight to part seven at all. I love how over the top that is with the with the damage and everything. Um, and sure, it doesn't really make sense how he's how his clothes are kind of healed up and everything, but it, it's whatever, you know. It's a it's a movie, you, and you know, and I like how they change up the look of him and everything. My number one though is process of elimination here, part six. Jason lives just like my favorite movie of Jason. Uh, this one. It's uh, to me, it's like the perfect blend of the human Jason and the zombie Jason because he's still, you know, I, I love how dark and nasty the skin is on him again in this one, man. Like just the back of his head and all brown and again, almost kind of pruned up looking at some parts. The bone, you know, in his eye, if we're going to talk about the unmasked, you know, look of him and like his eyes, you know, the maggots crawling out of him um, at the beginning of the movie and everything. I, I love the mask. It kind of takes away these two chevrons, you know, on the face and just has the one on the top. And it's kind of darker and uh, a little bit more pale. It just fits uh, C.J. Graham's head really well in the suit. And, and the reason I say that kind of is the perfect blend is because it still has that green shirt, you know, that, you know, part three, four, and five Jason had. And, and you know, the, the khaki pants from uh, Final Chapter Jason. And... And part five, Dream Jason. So it kind of has that aspect to it. Then he gets a freaking badass tool belt, which I guess some people might think is dumb, but I think it's awesome. He's got that machete in there. He's got these throwing knives. Then he gets these like gardening gloves, these yellow gloves that just make it like such a standout look to me. And that that kind of, you know, it's not all nasty as far as in like, as far as like super damp and slimy like the Manhattan Warner super torn up like the part seven or super you know swollen and everything and beat up like like the um jason goes to hell one but it's he's a damn zombie you can see it you know in his arms and in his head and his neck and everything like he's clearly a freaking zombie but he also still has that you know almost a bit of a human factor to him um even in the way he moves i mean he moves pretty damn quick in this one um while he's walking through the woods and everything um, and, and, you know, you can still just that the basic green shirt that the, the iconic kind of green shirt of Jason, uh, of Jason through the, you know, the first several films and, you know, pants, um, either jeans, like with part three or just those khaki pants of, uh, you know, of the final chapter dream Jason and then this one. So he still has like those iconic clothes of Jason while still being a zombie and adding some cool elements like the like the yellow gloves that kind of make a color pop on him and just that tool belt so badass you know i i, I immediately think to the scene like wherever he's like they're on the rv and he's got the girl in the uh you know in the bathroom of the rv and just holding her you know mouth shut with those gloves and seeing you know you get a pretty good shot of him there when he ends up standing on top of it you get a good shot of him too whenever he tears the this um uh what paintballers are that paintballers arm off and he goes you know he goes flying takes his machete such a badass look to him, man. And I, I, I just, this is, to me, a really iconic one to me as well because 
this was like the first um, Friday the 13th with this hockey mask. I got to see him. Uh, I got to watch. The first Friday the 13th, Jason Moore's hockey mask all the way through. I know Freddy vs. Jason was the first like movie I got to see him with, but like the, the first actual Friday the 13th I got to see Jason in his hockey mask with was this one. And that, that one, it's just, it's stuck out to me ever since as my favorite look. I got the figure of that one, of course, looking at it now and just freaking loving it, man, admiring it. Such a badass look. And again, just the perfect blend between, you get the best of kind of the those human Jasons um, and you get the, like, some of the best, and, and he's also a zombie, so, and that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm clearly more biased and, you know, more partial to the zombie Jasons, those just do it for me, although I do love them human Jasons, but anyways, guys, yeah, super fun, I love uh, thinking about just, like, you know, just trivial stuff like that, you know, just kind of the looks of the character and how it's evolved, and, you know, which ones people prefer and everything. That's always super interesting because it does, you know, there, I, I've seen, I've talked to some other people about it and their, their list, you know, varies greatly from mine. So I've seen some be kind of similar. Um, so I'd love to hear what you guys, uh, what your guys' thoughts are on each of these looks. And, you know, if you guys do count like some of those that I didn't count, like Never Hike Alone and stuff, because that would probably rank pretty high. Um, and I love that Savini Jason. That'd probably rank, if I was to rank it, probably around the Uber Jason area. Um, but, you know, I, I'd love to hear your guys' rankings of these looks of them and kind of what, how you see Jason, what, what, what Jason do you think of, um, when you think Jason Voorhees, you know, do you think of a human one, do you think of a zombie one? So, I, I just love kind of hearing what people, what, which version of these characters, you know, like Freddy or those Cenobites and now Jason, that you look at and you're just like, damn, that's badass and damn, that's freaking scary. You know, because it's part six for me as the most badass looking Jason. It has just those perfect qualities um, that I that I like in, in Jason. But you know, it could be freaking, it could be one, you're my bottom here, like part X, you know, pre-Uber Jason. Um, you know, it could be a human one. You know, you just never know. There's so, and that's what I was saying too, like, um, whenever we looked at Freddy, it, there were quite some big differences for sure. Um and the makeup and everything in, in some cases. Um, but I mean, with Jason, it's all out, just completely different stuff, just about every single film. So it made a really, really fun one, really fun looking at it. Um, next, next video we'll kind of be doing as a ranking the appearance thing will be of course, ranking all the Michael Myers looks whenever I, um, I, I'm currently going to watch through all the Halloween movies again. Love, love, love that series. So we're going to be running through it again. Um, like I like I always say, these don't really have any planned time. Uh, kind of like I do like my regular album reviews and now wrestling reviews, which has been fun. Kind of adding to the channel. Um, but I, I do love doing the horror stuff. Got a big collection. I've shown off my horror figure collection, which I do um, definitely want to show like an update on of uh, eventually. Kind of get an update because, man, it just keeps growing. Um and I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. So I, I think it'd be kind of fun to update those or maybe even just show some of them off maybe at, at some point. If you guys maybe be interested in that, just like, I mean, I have all mine out of box and all the accessories that I'm not displaying them with in a big box. But I could like, you know, maybe take them off the shelf and just kind of show you them and everything and maybe talk about them. That So that's kind of something I've been thinking about doing as well. But anyways, guys... Let's talk about your favorite Jason looks down there. Rank them for me, and we'll talk about what we like, what we hate about them, what we dislike about them, and kind of stuff we're in between on. But stay tuned, guys. We have the Anderson uh, Bruford Wakeman and Howe review that's probably going to go up this week. Um, we also, uh, and after that, if you tune into that, you'll figure out which band we're going to be covering next. Because obviously, Anderson Bruford Wakeman and Howe was just a one one time, uh, one, one and done deal, you know. One and done band and album. So then we'll be taking a peek at the next band. And like I said before, it's going to be the heaviest band we've looked at on here. So stay tuned for all that fun stuff we got coming up. And like, subscribe, and comment.